We are starting with the very shocking news that uh, Girls Aloud singer Sarah Harding has just revealed uh, that she has been diagnosed with advanced <laughs> breast cancer at the age of 38. She posted this photograph of herself telling fans that there's no easy way to say this and actually it doesn't even feel real writing it, but here goes. Earlier this year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and a couple of weeks ago, I received the devastating news that the cancer has advanced to other parts of my body. Um, I also read that apparently it appeared online uh, last week that Sarah had been seen in hospital and therefore she felt mm -hmm. that this was perhaps the right time to make it public. Um, Carol, I mean, apart from everything else that, that Sarah will be dealing with right now, um, that having to make it public must be such a difficult experience uh, in itself because I imagine oh, everyone will be different, but you want to kind of hunker down. Uh, but that's exactly what I did. And I, I really feel for Sarah because it is actually the hardest thing. It's hard enough getting the diagnosis, but and you get used to that. But then when you have to tell other people, it's, um, I mean, it's difficult. I only told my family and really close friends, but with every single one of them, it was, I had to make a real proper kind of effort to think it through and, and make a time and place to do it. So for her to, act, to have to do that and put it on social media and tell the world straight away is, you know, I mean, it's just, I, I feel for her. It's devastating, especially as she's been given the terrible news that it's actually spread as well. So um, I, it is difficult. I mean, I, when I told Denise, it was it was difficult. I remember we we met um, Carol for a drink, me and Lisa Maxwell, and we just thought we were going to have a ha, have a drink with her. And um, she walked in looking fit and well with a little hat on, which. Um, you know, and, and, and she said, um, I've, I've had treatment for breast cancer. And I just, I was so blindsided by the news that I just burst into tears. And then I felt yeah. so awful because Carol wasn't. She was telling me, it's all, it's all right, babes, it's all right, babes. And I was in floods <laughs> of tears. It was because it was so unexpected. And I love Carol and, I, and, and you know, um, and the fact that she'd been through all of this prior to telling us was just, was, was, incredibly, um, was incredibly hard. And I was just so passionately proud of how she dealt with ev everything th throughout the whole of her, of mm. her treatment and, uh, and recovery and, and, and still does. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Carol, mm. you, you've been through it with your mum. Um, so yeah. just incredibly raw oh. for you. Yeah, it really is. It's... Um... It's kind of non-stop, if you like, with with family and friends, and um, and it's it's it just doesn't get any easier. And you know, especially now with what's going on, and I feel, I mean, Sarah is is in hospital. She's getting the treatment it, from the looks from the picture. So I wish her so much uh, love, and I do I do know where she's coming from because telling the world is. I mean, she, she will be bombarded and everybody means well, but it's kind of overwhelming and, and people find it really hard to deal with it, harder than you do yourself sometimes, like as with Denise. So, you know, I just wish her the best. Mm, it's, uh, I, I yeah. think that's the hardest thing. It would be telling the family. First of all, you mm. get the news that you've got cancer and then having to tell your loved ones, you feel so bad, you know, like because you know that they're going to go through a lot with you. And when my sister was diagnosed, it was like we got a phone call saying that everything was all right and then half an hour later we got a phone call saying, actually, it's not all right, they've found another lump. And, that. and while we've been in lockdown, her daughter, Anika, who's 40, has been diagnosed with breast cancer as well. So she's been going through the treatment as well. So people often think it's older people that get it, but it's any age. It can, I mean, men can get it and everything. It's just like... And it's the most devastating news. And the worst thing is, every time you bump into somebody, they go, oh, I'm sorry to hear, mm. and then it makes you upset again. So you start avoiding people then because you don't want to... You don't want to upset other people, know. you know? Well, my mum was... But she... this is... Sorry, this is Sorry. The, the other thing, um, Linda. When you tell other people, it's still the C word. It's still cancer. Mm -hmm. and, and people automatically think the worst. And, and with breast cancer, you know, you, you could, should never say, oh, you're lucky, it's only breast cancer. But it is, it's quite curable and it's quite treatable if you catch it early. Mm. But for Sarah to be given the news that it's actually spread is, 
I mean, that's even harder. And I'm sure her family all know about it already. But to be to to have to come out and tell everybody else is pretty mm. pretty terrible. I know it's they just get, a shot. It, it is. I mean, I must admit, I'm sitting here in, in two minds and I'm just thinking, I, I don't know, Sarah Harding. And, and in some ways, I think, I don't want to be insensitive talking about someone's experience that I really don't know anything about. But just what you say, Kai, when I think back to, to my granny, it was a long time ago when she was diagnosed with cancer, she couldn't even say the word. There was actually mm. a, a kind of stigma a, attached to it. She would call it the big C. That was as far as she, she yeah. would go. It's, uh... um, and... Although, as I say, I'm slightly uncomfortable talking about somebody else, I think at least we are in a position that we do have this conversation. And, and we she's do also with, the wonderful the N with our wonderful NHS as well. That this affects well, you know, so many and this, people. All, yeah. You know, and, and Sarah has actually uh, also said that she is receiving the best of treatment and she has paid tribute to, you know, the wonderful medical staff that are, are looking after her. And, and Carol... I remember speaking to you too at the time after your diagnosis that you had such high regard for uh, the, the treatment that you received and the people that you were with. Yeah, it was exceptional. They offered advice and, and the, the, I mean, it was, I can't fault it at all. And it was kind of easy, if you like, for me. Um, but if everybody had known that I was going through that, it, it would have been every single time I would have a treatment, you'd have to, you know, tell people and and people would always come up to you. And it makes it hard. It makes yeah. you it makes it difficult for you to be able to forget that that you're ill. And you can actually forget that you're ill sometimes if people don't keep talking to you about it. And I'm not saying that people don't are not kind, they are, but uh it it, it is overwhelming sometimes. Mm, yeah. It's uh, and it's it you know Cancer, as you say, is a frightening word. I mean, you know, we lose nearly 500 people a day to cancer in this in this country, but we also have amazing success stories yeah, as well, we don't do. we? With the with the treatments now, like Carol said, my mum was early 50s when she got um, diagnosed. Hers was cancer of the soft palate, which actually, because it wasn't causing any pain, and my mum had a very pain high high pain threshold. And um, so she may have ignored it, you know, had it, had, had it been somewhere else, but she went to the dentist and it was discovered that way. And I remember uh, the night that she told my sister, Debbie and I, and Debbie and I never drank brandy and we never played cards. But I remember mum telling us, and we drank brandy and we played cards because it was a very weird... Distraction. Mm. Distraction to it. And mum had already told us at that time that she had decided that the surgery that was the only surgery that could save her life was too intensive for her because she was told she may never speak again, she wouldn't look the same, she might be on the corner of a sofa connected to a drip. She didn't want that and we had to accept it. She did then meet somebody who'd had it. She had this 13-hour surgery and from having a really, really serious uh, cancer, she did get secondaries on the way, but we had her for an extra 20 years because of the work at, um, at, at Sunderland General and the, um, and, yeah. and the NHS. So there are also amazing yeah. um, are. outcomes as well. There are, and, and, and the positive outcomes um, are increasing all yeah. the, the time. Um, uh, Sarah, our thoughts are genuinely with you. Yeah.